When you look at this body of water, it looks off. Something's a little bit wrong with it. Dotted around the water's edge are crumbling remains of a long forgotten past. It looks like some kind of apocalyptic vision. There's all these signs of, of human settlement, but everything is broken down and decrepit. Instead of being a vast living place, it's almost death-like. Derelict buildings and rusting relics are reminders of a community that once depended on the eerie-looking waters. You can see the remnants of a motorhome, broken down, old motel. So something happened here, and it wasn't that long ago. Possible clues as to the cause of the apparent mass exodus are visible in the surrounding terrain. And as you look around, the land is alive. There's bubbling mud coming up from gases deep within the Earth. I mean, could that have something to do with it? Is this a natural phenomenon? What changed? And what is going on with this body of water? In the 1960s, this was a booming holiday resort, regularly attracting over one million tourists every year. Only a two-hour drive from Los Angeles, it soon became a favorite playground of Hollywood's rich and famous. So back in its heyday, the, the Rat Pack was here, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Streisand, a whole lot of other people. It's before Palm Springs was what it is now. Bathers crammed onto the sun-soaked beaches and anglers filled their nets with a bounty of plentiful fish. There were regattas. There were more boats out on that sea than you could shake a stick at. The fishing was wonderful. It's hard to imagine those luxury times. The fact that all of these communities are down on their lock, it's not just one or two suffering from lack of investment, point to a much, much bigger problem. The thing that connects all of these sites together, the problem is the water. These are the ghost towns of the Salton Sea, an accidental lake that transformed the fortunes of this dusty desert region for better and for worse. In California, the fate of a crumbling community appears bound to an inexplicable inland sea. But how did a lake of such magnitude form in the middle of a dry desert valley? Could it be some kind of natural disaster was the culprit? or is another simpler reason to blame. In the early 1900s, everybody wanted to use the Colorado River to irrigate farms in the surrounding desert. The Colorado begins high in the Rocky Mountains, winding its way along 1,500 miles to the Gulf of California. To irrigate the Golden State's Imperial Valley, engineers constructed a canal to divert water away from the powerful river. Yet, trying to tame such a mighty beast was asking for trouble. Engineers like to be in control, but when you're up against the force of nature, you can never actually tell what's going to happen. In 1905, after torrential rains, the Colorado swelled and breached the newly built embankments the river changed course and started flowing west into what was a dry desert valley. Six billion cubic feet of water discharged into the unplanned lake every 24 hours, causing it to rise by seven inches a day. It took two years for the engineers to figure out how to stop the flow of water, and by that time, it had largely filled this vast inland basin. The lake itself essentially then created all of the things around. Money started coming in with the tourism. People started wanting to tap into that. They started building motels and beachfront facilities, and people started to drive out from Los Angeles to check out this brand new inland sea. They called it the Salton Riviera. Spanning nearly 400 square miles, the Salton Sea became California's largest freshwater lake. In addition to the thriving tourism industry, the engineering disaster transformed the once inhospitable land. The water in the desert meant that the land became fertile. It became a huge agricultural area. 
Farming is very important to the area. Imperial County is known as the, the, the breadbasket to California. If you want fruits and vegetables all the way through the Midwest, they very likely came from here in the Imperial County. At first, it was great. You had this barren, dry desert all of a sudden filled with fresh mountain water, and it was this lovely kind of oasis in this otherwise pretty brutal desert. What began life as a catastrophic mistake soon became known as the miracle in the desert. Yet the popularity of this man-made Californian lake was short-lived, and before long, the miracle turned into a nightmare. Well, here we are in the center of town. This used to be the bank, that the building that we're in here right now. Well, in its heyday, you could expect that there were traffic jams out here in the street, people crossing in the middle of the street, and not really caring what, who they stopped and what they did, because they were here for a good time. Little did the fun-loving tourists know, an ecological time bomb was ticking. Looking at the beach today, you don't have to be a specialist to know that it, it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look natural. There's something alien about the landscape. Everything is covered with this fine layer of kind of a white, dusty powder. The once pristine beaches now resemble a vision of hell. John Cariotis's wife, Amari, has witnessed firsthand the devastation wreaked on this region. No, people think this is sand. This is millions of fishes, fish bones, vertebrae. There's barnacles in here. It looks really pretty, but it's just dead fish, millions and millions of dead fish. You begin to start to think, is there a natural disaster? Well, this is a very active part of the Earth geologically. It's very near to the San Andreas Fault and many other faults. One of the stranger things that you find is this kind of area where there's all these mud pots bubbling up. It's almost like an alien landscape. Could it be that something like this happening has suddenly changed the environment around and caused many of the problems? I mean, at first impression, you might assume some sort of natural disaster has caused the problems here, but when you delve in, there's something more sinister going on. Because it's not a natural disaster, it's a man-made problem. The Salton Sea's only source of new water comes from the half a million acres of agricultural terrain that surround it. It appears the industrial farming that brought riches to many came at a terrible cost. Because it's the lowest place in the landscape, there's no in and out like a normal lake might have. So what goes into the system stays in the system. It's constantly getting saltier and denser as the water evaporates. You see that in the Dead Sea in Israel. Here, the problem is compounded because what water is flowing in is flowing through these various irrigated farms. So it's highly polluted with pesticides and fertilizer. And what we're left with in the lake is this chemical soup. The fish can't breathe and they die. And then they end up on the shore. We've had half a mile in of dead fish. And it was just, it was horrific. The smell was horrific. No one wanted to be on the beach. Tourists quickly abandoned the dying Salton Sea and the towns that it supported. Yet even worse was to come. Over the past 15 years, the water level has dropped by almost eight feet, exposing 20,000 acres of desiccated lake bed. In that region of the desert, there's almost no rainfall. So the Salton Sea started to dry up and it's now exposing this fine dust with lots of salt, but also lots of these poisonous pesticides and so on concentrated in it. The winds pick up sand from the desert, and it will pick up the chemicals and transport them hundreds of miles across the rest of America. It's a huge risk to public health. Where once sunbathers packed the beaches, now toxic sludge and the stench of death drifts from the shore. It has a whole impact. We have the highest asthma rate because of this. There are people who are ill because of breathing this. Behind every tourist town, there's a population of people whose home it is. That's where they bring up their children. That's where, where they live and they die. And for people here, it's very, very sad. Today, the hotels and restaurants once so full of life, lay abandoned. 
a fading memory of a once golden age.